everybody from Brown Stadium. Home is where the wins are for the Browns this year. Great. Fake and throw. Flacco wide open. Touchdown to Joku. Joe Flacco never sweats. I mean, he is as calm in the fourth quarter, a tight ball game as he is in, in the preseason warm-up. They're three and one against teams that currently lead their division. It's a really good football team. In the AFC, Chris was just talking about that Browns win. The Browns moved to eight and five. It adds up to a 75% chance now of the Cleveland Browns making the playoffs. Kevin Stefanski has coached all four of those guys to a win this season. It bears mentioning of the job that Kevin Stefanski does on offense. I can't believe how good Joe Flacco is. They do. He rolls right. He throws the middle. It's wide open. 25 at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, it's David Bell! That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Browns are looking pretty good right now. So many great things to say, so much good, some bad that we will touch on, but more good than bad this week. And that's really all that we need to keep the momentum rolling. I want to open up on Kevin Stefanski's script in that opening drive. That opening drive was the perfect mix of the run, the quick game, pass game, and the screen game. It all mended together perfectly. You open up the game with a run, then you run a screen to mitigate the pass rush, keep the Jaguars on their heels, then get into that short yardage scenario where you're in third and one with Nick Harris and Kareem Hunt in the I formation, and then you go play action and hit a wide open deep shot to David and Joku. It was picture perfect rhythm all the way down and the best way you could think of starting the game out for Cleveland. So first let's touch on Joe Flacco and some of these offensive performances. Flacco is just doing what is asked of him. And that has been a big problem with all of the quarterbacks in the past ranging from Baker Mayfield up to Deshaun Watson. Sometimes guys are trying to do too much and they miss the layups. They miss the simple things that are there right in front of their eyes. Just get the ball out quick into the hands of the playmakers and let them go to work. And that's why we're seeing David and Joku start to thrive over these past couple of weeks. If you get that guy on the move and he catches the ball, which is Issue number one, he's going to make things happen. We saw Elijah Moore make big plays. Cedric Tillman make a huge play on that opening drive on that post route, which was definitely targeting, which wasn't called, which is kind of crazy. And Amari Cooper in those run dominant scenarios, he's picking up four or five, six yards on quick hitches, quick slants. And that is such a breath of fresh air. I think that that is such a key thing, especially as the offensive line continues to be injured and running the ball continues to be so somewhat of a problem. Flacco, of course, wasn't perfect. He had the pretty bad interception that looked worse in real time, but when you replayed it, you saw that Cedric Tillman got picked essentially by the defensive player and wasn't able to get to his spot. But again, it's Joe Flacco. He's 38 years old. He hasn't played in a very long time. You're going to have to deal with some of those plays every now and then, but ultimately he did a great Great job. And let's talk about the run versus the pass and play calling for a second. Fans are screaming on Twitter during the game, at the games themselves, yelling, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And then you see one yard run, two yard run, three yard run. This is not Nick Chubb's run game. This offensive line is completely beat up. Dewan Jones, the news just came out today. He's out for the season. So running the ball to the right, running the ball to the left behind Jaron Christian. It's not going to be the same as when Nick Chubb is carrying the ball and this offensive line is fully healthy. Also, Posich, who knows the extent of that injury? Now you have Nick Harris playing center, not as dominant of a force at the point of attack. And also, that does not mean to abandon the run game because regardless of the issues, this team still runs the ball well, but it's the Stefanski philosophy of throwing to open up the run. And again, with the injuries to the offensive line, it's going to have to be that way. If this team wants to make a run in the playoffs, they are going to have to throw a lot. And let's talk about the perception of what makes a good coach or a good play caller. We saw on the fourth and three where they went for it, David Bell wide open scores a touchdown. The announcers after that play were saying, a brilliant play call by Kevin Stefanski. And I'm sure everyone in the fans and everyone who's been hating on Stefanski said, 
that, okay, well, we got to give it to them. That actually was a good play call. They are all good play calls if the players execute. It's not like you're running a sneak on fourth and 10. Joe Flacco made a great play to work to his right by just enough time till Bell was wide open, sitting alone. The defender slipped and he scored. Kareem Hunt also made a play saving block as pressure was coming in. Kareem Hunt shoots down, chops a guy down at the knees, gives Flacco just enough time to make that throw. So you can't jump between good play caller, bad play caller. Most of it comes down to player execution. Good coaches get their players in position to make plays. And that's what Stefanski has done most of the season. Yes, he's had some bad calls, but that is what it has been a lot of the time. Similarly, a great play call bringing in DTR in the fourth quarter. If you get stuffed, all everyone would be saying is, why are you bringing in DTR? off of the bench to run that play. A lot of it is just player execution. This game from the receivers group in general was much improved. Still too many drops, still too many drops, but getting better and getting in time because in the same way that this offense has been a little herky-jerky, moving in between four different quarterbacks, different running backs and offensive line, these receivers have had to adjust to that as well. And different quarterbacks throwing the ball at different velocities, different timing, makes a big difference too. David Njoku did absolutely everything right. Caught the ball, ran with it so well. I think that we're really seeing, again, like I mentioned before, in the past couple games where Njoku is so much better with the ball in his hands than we've really seen. I remember watching him a lot where he kind of always looks like he's stumbling and he's got to get a couple steps in before you really start to see him run well with the ball but the way he was able to outmaneuver these smaller dbs him bench pressing a corner off of his chest to convert for a first down and just his adjustment with flacco on that one broken play on the sidelines it was outstanding and i feel that he's getting really comfortable with flacco and flacco is getting really comfortable with him similarly building off of last week's performance. Elijah Moore, great catch on that deep dig that helped flip the field. Great play along the sidelines as well. Really great job on the toe taps. And then Cedric Tillman, as we mentioned before, only two catches on the day, but that first one was a huge one. He has such strong hands going into traffic. Love it, love it. And too, what he can do with the ball in his hand on that crossing route at a different point in the game, he makes moves. He always looks like he's about to get taken out, but is so deceptive in his elusiveness. The main culprit in this game, Amari Cooper, in terms of the receivers, that fumble, inexcusable. You have to get that against your chest. Three points of contact, that's basic stuff basic stuff that he needs to do. And that has been the problem the past couple of weeks. There are so many things that Amari Cooper is great at, but the routine plays, the consistency seems to plague him and has kind of always plagued him throughout his career. But hopefully he can dial it in. He's been dealing with the concussion, his ribs. Hopefully this is his last poor game where he really cost them because he's sniffing a chance at a real playoff run he needs to be at the top of his game and later on in that game there was a third down where they ran double slant elijah moore was on the outside amari cooper was on the inside amari cooper was wide open but flacco passed him up for elijah moore and after the play amari cooper was kind of like man i was open he was visibly a little upset that he didn't get the ball there but that's on him and that's something that he has to realize if he keeps dropping routine balls fumbling the ball in key spots his quarterbacks are going to start looking for other options because they're delivering for him so i think that coop will rebound overall he was great he's reliable the way they're using him now is the way we use running backs on first downs we just need four yards on first down so let's throw him those quick hitches quick slants let him go to work but you can't have a fumble like that like he did in our own end that has been the brand's biggest issue where they're not putting teams away that could have very well been a drive where the Browns go down, score again, or at least a field goal and extend this lead, but instead fumble in your own end, Jacksonville winds up scoring off of that. So that's points that we're giving away and your veteran number one receiver can't be the guy making those mistakes. And now let's talk about this defense. Such a rebound, still dealing with injuries. Denzel Ward didn't play, Juan Thornhill out. Grant Delpit gets the contract extension, little groin injury that he's dealing with though, but overall had a fantastic game, earning his money. I mentioned in the last video as well, 
well that we were going to need bigger performances from him in particular because he had a really good start to the season and then kind of got quiet. And not necessarily that he's not making his plays. He's where he needs to be for the most part and makes the routine plays, but he wasn't having a lot of splash plays. But that sack on Lawrence later in the game, that was a major, major play. Knock them out of field goal range. Get your offense the ball back. Big time play. Then we talked about the linebacker group, how great JOK has been. And he was fantastic. Again, such a spark plug, so much energy, so great on the blitz, so great in open field tackling, so aggressive. Sometimes that bites him, jumped offside the one time, but always a net positive with JOK. Anthony Walker last week also mentioned he's someone who needs to step up. Yes, similar to Delpit, he's been in the right position, is just consistent, but having a forced fumble, major play and what you need from your veteran. So linebacker play, probably the best game as a unit for them in this game. Then you have Greg Newsom, who I think took a major step. That Broncos game, a lot of people were pretty upset. He was better closing in more aggressive more physical with ball carriers really good stuff then martin emerson what can you say about that guy his two interceptions were great one was a real gimme the other one was a miscommunication from calvin ridley not looking at the ball coming out of trevor lawrence's hand but i think that his best play of the day and i think most people will agree the break up on Zay Jones down the sideline in the first quarter to make that play with no safety help. What confidence it gives for not only your defense coordinator, but also your pass rush, your safeties to know that, okay, this guy has his stuff covered. He makes the play when he needs to. And it's not like a drop, like the receiver dropped the ball and, oh, it's a pass breakup and we celebrate after. If he doesn't get his hand on that ball and make that play, that's a touchdown. So Martin Emerson continuing to blossom playing aggressive, and being a difference maker. Those are huge plays and change the landscape of a game so much and are often forgotten because interceptions are interceptions, but that pass breakup was major. You know, this defensive front hasn't gotten home as many times as we thought they might have, considering Zadarius Smith, Miles Garrett, boosting the defensive tackles, and then Obo Karankwa, who still love every single week, brings it every single week. But Miles Garrett, got home when it mattered most that two point conversion end of the game that that seals it and that's miles garrett he shows up when it matters most he's been quiet dealing with the injury but came through right there the holding calls hopefully he starts to get these because it, it's getting ridiculous how his shirt is being pulled he's turning standing at the refs being like bro what is going on and still nothing something has to be done about that nevertheless defense great bounce back after the past two weeks the pre-stamp penalties on their end the offsides that's a byproduct of being so aggressive but they need 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 to get that under control and finally one thing that the defense really needs to just capitalize more on is the opportunity to end the game there were two times on that drive where the game could have been over d'anthony bell almost had an interception and then anthony walker almost had an interception we've seen a lot of those plays throughout this year where there's an opportunity to end it then and there and they don't make the play that is something that needs to change if you're dealing with injuries on the offensive side Joe Flacco, you can't expect them to just light it up each and every week. The Jags defense was bad. So the defense has to do more to help out this offense if they want to be truly historically great, not just great at home and not just great in spurts. They need to capitalize on these moments when they have the ability to end it and not have some heart attack onside kick moment. And finally, let's talk about the special teams, our punt cover teams, Corey Bohorquez, when you are backed up in your own end to have a 70 yard kick to flip the field like that, that has been all year. The, the times that the defense has played the best have come after great kicks from Corey Bohorquez. When we can pin teams back, this defense starts to play so much more aggressive and downhill. And even if they don't create turnovers or get a safety, to have an offense have to punt from their own end like that, that is what keeps this team in games. Give them the opportunity to kick field goals, move the ball, get into the red zone. And then Dustin Hopkins, what can we say about this guy? Everyone was so upset, or a lot of people were upset after the trade to get him. But this is another game where we won because of the trade that Andrew Barry made back in August. Dustin Hopkins continuing to be consistent and perfect beyond 50 yards.
knock on wood. We found our next Phil Dawson. Keep him around, extend him, whatever you got to do. He's not perfect, misses some PATs, misses some short kicks sometimes, but to have that confidence to be able to make a ceiling kick in that moment, amazing stuff. So overall, great game. I think that this was the best game that Cleveland has played all year in terms of their performances on offense, defense, and special teams. Stefanski called a great game. Schwartz called a great game. Very, very happy to see a rebound after those two games. You got the Bears coming up. There's going to be a lot to talk about on that and a lot of injuries to be updated on. So if you want to hear more, guys, please subscribe to the Optimistic Fan Club podcast put a couple episodes out. I will be consistently putting out a Friday episode of the podcast where we can preview the Browns games as well as some other games because we talk general NFL, but always make time for the Browns in previewing. And I really think you guys would enjoy it. Please subscribe to that. It's available on Spotify so you can listen without having to have the YouTube app open. And also too, optimism wins my people so grab some of these for christmas for your grumpy old dad or uncle or whoever works great on a car or a laptop so buy these up not too expensive whatsoever and a great gift and it really helps support the channel guys really trying to invest everything that comes in to bring you guys better content throughout the year not just for brown stuff but NFL in general. I'm thinking maybe next week, some people have been asking for instant reactions. Maybe Sunday night, Monday morning, I'll post a podcast, an audio only podcast, so it doesn't take away from any of these recap videos where we can touch on some initial thoughts from the games. It won't spoil the quality of what we've been doing here, but just some thoughts along with thoughts from the other NFL games that have happened. So that is audio only and why you will need to subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and where that comes out so guys thank you so much for watching eight and five eight and five how about these browns all right see you in the next one